In our last segment, looking at toxic sites, we told you about the history of the Manhattan Project in St. Louis and what led to widespread contamination. New maps from the Army Corps of Engineers show contamination in a local creek extends to near the Missouri River. Tonight, my colleague Brett Baer looks at the cleanup effort there and at the landfill where the nuclear, nuclear waste sits today. They had a chance to really prevent all the harm that we're seeing now, and for whatever reason, they chose not to. The U.S. government keeps a list of locations across the country known as Superfund sites. Dawn Chapman and Karen Nichols say when they bought their homes, they were unaware a Superfund site was located nearby. It was like, what the heck is that? I, I didn't know to even look for that when I purchased my house. The Environmental Protection Agency added the Westlake landfill to its national priorities list in 1990. The Superfund process can be very lengthy. Nearly 35 years later, the agency says it is still working to develop a plan as to how to clean up the site. We don't have the timeline. It's difficult to guess how long this is going to take. Um, we've made really good progress with the responsible parties on doing the full assessment. Some of us may not even experience the cleanup in our lifetime. Adding to the complex work, a fire has been burning at that site for nearly a decade. It's not uncommon for there to be landfill fires. The EPA says there's significant space between the fire and the radioactive waste. Crews have installed a barrier to contain the fire, and officials say there is currently no risk to residents in the area. That subsurface smoldering event is definitely in better shape than it was you know, several years ago. But some residents say the work is taking too long. The truth is, is that both federal agencies have made um, huge errors and mistakes in characterizing it. The two sites where toxic waste was stored after the Manhattan Project were added to the national priorities list in 1989. Coldwater Creek does not have its own designation, but falls under the storage sites listing. A super fun site shows where essentially you have where the source of the material is, and then contamination can extend off of those boundaries. This creek goes 14 miles throughout um, the county that I serve. And so I just believe that the whole entire creek uh, should be tested. The Army Corps of Engineers is the lead federal agency working to clean up the waterway. They estimate the effort could take until 2038. There's an extensive amount of coordination, investigation, documentation, remediation that we have to do just to get one area. So the overall process definitely does take some time and we understand that. Is that acceptable? No, it's outrageous. And by the way, it keeps moving. You know, if you look at their estimates, Brett, they're always pushing them out. Uh, well, wait another day. Give us another decade. I mean, this is outrageous. Let's remember, this creek has had contamination in it since the 50s, since the 60s, and now 2038. I mean, we will be getting close to the century mark. The Army Corps of Engineers is taking samples along the 14-mile stretch of Coldwater Creek. That area contains 756 properties, including homes, commercial locations, and recreational sites. When the Army Corps took over in 1998, the extent was not 100% known. We got to in 2012 and realized that there was more extensive sampling needed in Coldwater Creek. New maps from the agency show locations where soil is contaminated. Those locations are in red. Portions in yellow show where sampling is still being conducted. Green and blue areas have been determined safe. The driver for a lot of our remedial action is the thorium-230 for it to cause harm needs to be ingested. Coldwater Creek flows behind Jana Elementary School, which closed in 2022 after thorium, a carcinogen, was detected on the property. Jana Elementary School was, was truly a nightmare come true for us because we knew where it sat along the creek. Ashley Burnoff was PTA president at Jana, where her son attended. Since 2018, the Army Corps of Engineers has really done its due diligence in the Department of Energy along with them um, to not answer my questions. She says she had been requesting testing and documents for several years before her concerns were addressed. We did extensive testing both inside and outside the school with tried and true industry standard procedures and evaluations that we are required to do. Bernard says that was not enough. Eventually, an outside company took samples from the grounds. The Boston Chemical Company were able to take 
dust samples and analyzed them and found thorium-230. The Army Corps of Engineers says dangerous levels of thorium were found, but only in locations close to the creek. They determined the school did not need to close. So the, the banks of the creek are being remediated by the Army Corps of Engineers because it meets their magical threshold of what radioactive waste, what they're willing to clean up of radioactive waste. We verified and concluded that the school was safe from a radi radiological standpoint, and we stand by that. The Corps is taking soil samples from homes near Coldwater Creek after contamination was found in backyards. When there is an area of contamination approaching that, we will always follow that. How will the Radiation Exposure Compensation Act help speed things up? Well, a couple of things. I mean, number one, for anybody in the St. Louis region, the St. Charles region, who has been exposed to radioactive contamination and gotten sick because of it, this act would give them life-saving compensation. It also makes clear that the government is on the hook for this.